All right, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We've got um, a real treat for you guys today. Um, Noah Arnold, who is the founder of Cyan Lens, uh, their videography company. Uh, they do all sorts of video editing work and um, he's a relatively new entrepreneur. He's kind of in the same boat as me. Uh, no, how long have you been, um, you know, owning Cyan Lens? Hey, Keaton. Uh, I've been in business about a year. Uh, about a year? Know. Yeah, about a year. Uh, it's that's a freshie. When, you know, things really started taking off and uh, we really started getting some clients and big projects and stuff like that. So cool, bro. Yeah. Cool. Well, dude, thank you so much for being on this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so I, I want to get the listeners, uh, and I want to learn a bit, little bit more about you. I've known you for a little while now, but um, where are you from originally, man? I uh, grew up in Grafton, Massachusetts. It's this little town next to Worcester. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty, not a lot of comments. You know, it's the uh, a middle class Massachusetts town. There's not a whole lot to talk about it. It's not a city, suburbs, so... You know, I had a pretty good upbringing. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah. Mom and dad is still together and everything? Yep, yep. You got any brothers or sisters? I have two older brothers. Uh, one's a, a mechanical engineer up in Vermont and Burlington, and the other is in Hasbro uh, designing Nerf blasters and all kinds of other toys. So It's not a yeah. bad gig. No, it's, it's not, not at all. <laughs> cool, man. So... Before you were doing uh, videography, what, what were you getting into? Uh, well, back in, I think, yeah, middle school, I was really into robotics. Super into the engineering and robotics side of things. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and I kind of slowly just fell in love with the storytelling in the film world. Um, so I took a couple classes. Uh, down at Yale for post-production, I think in like freshman year of high school and just absolutely loved it. I loved working on the team. I loved working on a creative vision. And then I decided to go to school for it. So I went to Emerson for, you know, for visual media and uh, kind of always been into it. So before that, I guess the earliest thing would be robotics, but that was in like middle school. So Did you build anything? Did you build anything? I built a couple robots that a middle schooler would build <laughs> <laughs> yeah it would drive around and do like basic basic things but nothing nothing too crazy so. what was the first film project that you did uh it would be my short film roxy actually well i did a gopro montage as a kid and that was that was sick that was so cool i was so in love with that now looking back on it it's hilarious to watch but um what was the montage of just me and my friends doing just dumb things <laughs> like what come nothing, on nothing what like thing? like i don't know snowboarding and like trying a trick like on skis off a big jump or like going down a hill on like a long board or all kinds of stuff jumping doing a crazy flip into a pool so like again all like mil middle schooler things <laughs> but it was really my first taste of uh video editing and uh you know learning what that actually consists of. And I kind of, I loved it. So the first real project I did was my short film Roxy in high school. And it was for a local film fest that was put on and it ended up winning. And I got to give a little speech at the end about it and about the people who worked on it with me because none of us had any idea what we were doing. It's amazing we even submitted anything, never mind win. So uh, after winning that, I was like, okay, this is cool. I, I like this. This is, I'm going to chase this high for the rest of my life. So That's pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, what was Roxy about? Oh boy. How do I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to know, man. Is I'm going to spoil it because I hope nobody watches it. Um, <laughs> Roxy is about a uh, unhealthy relationship between a couple. And, you know, you kind of watch it in the, the first half of the short film, they're in love and they're cute. And the honeymoon phase. Right, exactly. They're yeah. adorable. Um, and as the short film goes on, it gets a little more and more toxic. She gets more controlling. You know, she becomes super jealous. She's like becoming this like monster. 
and then by the end it's uh you know the final scene is he like kicks her out he gets rid of her and then like he like gets super sick afterwards and the final scene is like you realizing that okay she was actually a metaphor for uh drugs and like his addiction with drugs and how it started out you know super fun and great but slowly devolved into something controlling so and then like he he relapses and you see her like appear in the back and for, i don't know it's it's hey, old, that's cool. but i really want to remake it someday as like now that i'm a professional and i kind of know what i'm doing <laughs> that's that's intense man yeah yeah it was, a, cool. it was a fun project so um have you ever messed with drugs before no never you drink Not, or anything yeah yeah i do normal massachusetts things like but weed because it's legal i have i have experimented a little bit <laughs> now that it's legal yeah uh, but a few gummies you didn't yeah. in college in college um i uh, i don't know why i wasn't against it like at all uh just but just didn't your thing yeah i'm kind of i like to go 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 and like the my perspective of it was like it would just like stop you in your tracks and just nothing would happen and that, i don't know i just so i just never got into it uh but now that it's legal dabbled a little bit you know it's good it's i'm realizing it's good to chill sometimes you know let the brain relax a little bit so and uh, i'm actually talking with a few cannabis companies about doing some production projects so it's funny funny how it all things all things come <laughs> around right for sure man for sure um now when when did you start getting paid to to do video <laughs> no i mean like i know you, you you got this business going on now but like did you ever do like i don't know a freaking music video or so, something in college or high school and someone threw you a, you know 100 bucks or whatever uh yeah so high school i did a couple little things little dumb like come record this birthday party or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and then emerson no nobody nobody got paid for anything we did at emerson because you're in a, a saturation of filmmakers right and a lot of them are better than you so you know you're just kind of working on sets and trying to learn from those who know more and teach those who know less and you know that was all it was all very uh a community learning experience so nobody really got paid for things you know you have the one-offs who would try to you know break out of college and go get paid for something but that wasn't common and then after Emerson, I went to the corporate world where I was getting paychecks at the on Fridays. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, what, what were you doing there? So Emerson, uh, my final couple months, I went out and worked in LA for Paramount uh, Productions at oh, no Bona Ventura. Uh, they're the guys who do all like the Transformer movies and the action movies and stuff like that. Um, and that was awesome. Didn't love LA, and you know, there's a there's a girl I like on the East Coast, so figured that's a that's a better option and uh so i came back and started working for hasbro um in their internal production agency as a associate producer so that's basically helping out the producers and doing producery things that the producers don't want to do uh, uh, making like nerf commercials and stuff but like by the end you know you're kind of running your own sets you're kind of doing your own stuff um which was awesome i fell in love with it like i love having a team that knows what they're doing and everyone having a common goal and everyone aligning and producing something cool and everyone walking away at the end of the day happy um so absolutely fell in love with that um COVID hit hasbro downsized decided yeah. to go into um one of my other little side skill sets i don't know if that's that sounds arrogant but um would oh, be side hustle side hustle right uh, which yeah. would be 3D uh, graphics and depositing and yeah. you know, 3D modeling. Um, Wait, so, so I want to take it back for a second because I want to make this point for the people who are listening, right? So everyone tells you, you know, the paycheck is like the mm -hmm. safest option. Right. They tell you, you know, go get your job or people who sell the paycheck, they're like, oh, I can't leave this job because, you know, what am I going to do to get paid? How am I going to make any money, Right. right. And then next thing you know, something happens like that and your paycheck's I, gone. 
And right. you, you I think, had this uh, false illusion of control. Because we, we servo to our environment always. And that's something I have realized is, you know, I went off the deep end and stopped getting a paycheck on Fridays and it was super uncomfortable and you panic. You're like, Oh God, I don't have any money. I need to start doing stuff. So you start doing stuff. So you start, you know, reaching out to clients, you start getting out there and, and pushing the bounds. If you have that security, you have to be a very specific type of person to also build a business. So for me, like I always knew I wanted to start a business, but it wasn't until like, I had to, if it were, yeah, not like I could have gone, uh, gone and gotten another job, but until like I had committed and I didn't have anything else, like I fully sent into starting a business. Yeah. What was, what, what was going through your head when, when you got fired and you had the choice you laid could, off? No, no, no. Off. Oh, okay. Laid off. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, man. But you know, it's, it's not that you did anything wrong. Let's get that out there. He's very, right. you know, if you're going to hire this guy, he's honest and does his job, right? <laughs> Let's just be clear about that. Um, but like you you don't have a job anymore. You have a choice to, you could go start applying on Indeed like crazy, go, you know, right. asking for applications, going door to door and all that type of stuff. Or you could do what you did, but like what was going through your head when, when this stuff was going on where you're like, you know, I'll give it a shot. And, or like and see what happens or like what like right. what was what was going on dude i want to hear it uh well the third the biggest thing was like i'm not ready for this like i don't have the experience to do this mm -hmm. i need to be in the industry longer uh, and it's something i debated for quite a while it's like okay do i go get more experience and uh looking at it now and we've recently had some really big successes at my company we really recently, recently had projects that are you know pushing into the the tens of tens of thousands of dollars worth. Um, I'm glad that I did start it when I did because the amount that I have learned from figuring it out has been probably, you know, twofold or tenfold of what I would have learned actually in the industry. Because it's, again, it's where you have to learn. You absolutely have to, because you can't show up and not know what you're talking about. You can't, you know, not learn what you need to learn to for it to be successful. So it's this whole, you know, putting yourself in a position where you have no other choice but to succeed, you know, that is your best chance of succeeding. If you have a way out, you're not, you're going to take the way out, right? That's my personal philosophy. And that's how my brain works. Um, that might not be. I think it's how most people do it. It's like, it's not fight or flight, it's survival. Right. Right, dude. Like you're just, um, I can't tell you like, how many times I've been like, dude, how am I going to pay payroll next week? Right. And then my brain shifts and right. I go and right. make the money to, yep. you know, like, boom. And yep. if my brain operated like that all the time, I'd be a millionaire by now. I think, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? But like you get comfortable, even inside my business, I get comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's, yeah, the, and you know, you replace that panic by people who push you. Because, you know, the, the factor of money will get you so far until you get your business like up and running and successful. And then, and then you put people around you who, who still instill that panic of like, oh, if I don't get this done, if this doesn't happen, they can't get paid. They can't get this project. They can't get the client. And that is like the biggest driver for me because I will, I'll work to my bone to make sure the people around me are happy working for me, you know? Mm. So... That's so true, man. Um, so you, there was panic going on. You, right. You said, I just have to do this. Um, but why didn't you go the easy? Why didn't you like in my eyes, like, why don't you just go fill out applications? Um, because I was told by one of my producers that it will be 10 to 12 years before I produce anything on my own, just mm. because of the industry just because yeah. how the industry is, you know, you gotta, you gotta put in your work as it, as it's said. Um, gotta be a bitch. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I rejected that. And Good. I'm glad I did. I'm you glad. I did. Um, and I am now where I wanted to be in 10 years when we had that conversation Ooh. at, you know, yeah. at Hasbro with my producer. That's so, sick. 
I'm very glad that I did. And looking back, I have more job opportunities now, like trying to start a business than I absolutely ever would, you know, sending out applications or like mm-hmm. reaching out to people on LinkedIn. Yeah, but um, what, do you, what, what about all the people that are like, you know, uh, you shouldn't go to a school for for film or you shouldn't go to school for art or you shouldn't go to school for this or that. You're not going to make any money. Uh, you should go for engineering or accounting or communications or something like that. What do you tell those people? Well, nowadays we, we got to be frank with each other of like, if you want to make money, you go into a trade, you go become like a plumber or an electrician or a construction worker, because you'll make a ton of money right now. And you'll probably make a ton of money in 20, 30 years because those trades are paying extremely well. So if money is your goal, you know, there are other options out there. No, totally. But I'm I'm just saying, like, uh, you hear these stories about these kids who they're passionate about film and they want to go to school for film and go into debt, you know, 50K or whatever or more uh, to to go to film. And their parents are like having a heart attack. Right. You know, you t- what do you what do you say to those kids who are on the edge that they're, they're thinking about going to college for this? Do you think they can or should and they are going to be able to make a living after they get out or right. you, you know what I mean? I've, I've thought about this question a lot and I don't have a solid opinion on it because on one hand, you know, there's a part of me is like, oh my God, I should have spent the ridiculous amount of money I spent on Emerson. I should have tried to start a business, right? I should have, that's enough money to, you know, quickly start a business and build a team and be successful with it, knowing what I know now. However, I really don't think 18 year old me would have done that successfully. So in my specific case, I have absolutely no idea if it was the right decision or not. I just know it's the one I made and it's what I'm going with. So if you're thinking about going to film school, make sure you're going for the right reasons. Make sure you want to go to learn film, not just because you have to go to college and film is what you like. Mm. Go to school to learn. Don't go to school because it's just the next step. Listen up. Listen up. Yeah, that's, that's right, man. That's right. Um, Well, so I want to go back. You, you were doing some, 3D rendering projects and stuff like that. Um, I mean, dude, how do you, how are you going out and finding these, these gigs? (laughs) Uh, Or maybe not the 3D rendering, but like anything that you you do. I mean, like, yeah, someone's like, okay, I got a camera. I know how to edit some film and stuff. Well, so how do I get someone to pay me? At this point in my career, I wasn't really touching cameras much. I was really in the 3D world. Um, And I took a bunch, I did school of motion. Um, which is a basically an online university for 3D work. And I really wanted to solidify my skills. So I did that. Um, I did a program was called E4All, basically how to start your own business uh, in Worcester. And I just kind of... Was it helpful? E4All? Yeah. Yeah, was it helpful? Yeah, E4All was helpful. And I can talk more about them in a minute here. But uh, at that point in my career, I was just kind of hoping that clients appeared. And luckily, a couple. How did it work? It worked. Yeah, I don't know. I hoped hard enough. Um, so a couple appeared, and I did some three D projects, and I very quickly realized that okay, being a three D artist, being a three D compositor is uh, very under. Hmm. I didn't interact with a lot of people throughout the day. You're spending eight hours a day in front of a uh, computer, just you know, working on the art, working on the render. And I didn't like that. I, I function on social energy. I function on teams and working with people and collaboration. And like, that's where, you know, working with a team is where I'm, I feel alive. Right. Um, yeah. So if it was like, okay, that's, I wish I knew that like a long time ago before I started learning all this and committing to it. So I did a huge pivot um, and through E for all and my mentors and stuff um, decided to go into the more of the production side of things. Um, and I'm very thankful I have because now I'm in a position where I have enough skill sets in the industry where I can have the high level conversations with all of the professionals around me who are better at what they do than me. You know, I know how to do it. 
it takes me forever, but I generally know how to do most things in the film world. But I can also talk to the people and understand how long it takes them or what they're doing or how to fix something or come up with creative problem solving. So I really both purposely and accidentally put myself in a producer role that I can, again, have these conversations and hopefully be a great producer to my team because I understand what they're doing. Um, so switch to film. Again, uh, the first little video I filmed, I hadn't touched a camera in years at this point because I've been on the production side of things. So that's all emails. You don't, you don't touch the camera. You just email people about filming things. Uh, and then I did 3D, that's no camera. Um, so the first little thing I got paid for Cyan Lens, I wasn't even named at that point, was on my phone at Mass Barbell Gym in Worcester. And this guy named Brian Zimmer, uh, you know, he's an entrepreneur himself, started a gym in high school and built it into like this huge powerlifting gym uh, in Worcester. It was, it was awesome. You know, it was, it had, I think it had like 200, 300 members. Um, and he was making great money and he paid me to make a little how-to video on how to use some of the equipment because people kept breaking the equipment. And I filmed it on my phone, got paid the, like 50 to $80 for it or something <laughs> like that. And it was like, oh, okay, this is something I can do. So, uh, you know, started doing that, bought a real camera, started using that more um and kind of just slowly grew and now i'm done a full circle to where i'm back to being a producer hiring people to use the camera again so it oh, all, all done a done a full circle here yeah that's cool man uh you like what you're doing now you're happy oh yeah 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 that's sweet it's uh someone someone said this at some point you know uh i don't work a nine to five anymore and i hated working a nine to five you know you, you live for the weekends etc but now I work a 24 seven and I love it. Now I'm right. all I do is think about my business, but I enjoy it. It's like, I have the conversation with people. It's like, Oh, you should chill. You should, you know, not work on the weekend. It's like, I want to go do that. I want to go edit this project because I'm excited to see the final result. I'm excited to share this with you. I'm excited to go get new clients and make something cool and make something happen. You know? So it's cool, man. It's cool. Um, you got some employees under your belt now, huh? I have a few contractors. Yep. A few business partners. Um, you know, uh, a lot of my friends all have skill sets that are kind of related to the industry. Um, and they, they kind of contribute with their intellect quite a bunch. And I don't think I could ever be in the position I am without the people around me. It takes a village to start a business. You know, again, you have to be a very specific type of person to build a business by yourself with only you. Yeah. So I, what, what about some uh, troubles you've run into with hiring employees? What, like, what are some of the things you would tell people to avoid when they're hiring employees? Because, you know, there's, uh, it isn't all sunshine and butterflies over here, my friend. Yeah. Uh, don't hire employees until you're really ready for it and you're prepared for it. And when you do, there's a reason there's an interview process. So, you know, make sure you're vetting your employees, make sure you're like really feeling it out uh, because you have a lot of options out there and especially in the creative industry, right? You know, there is a lot of people who are passionate and driven and really, really want the position that you have open. Find those people, don't settle for, you know, the uh, people who think it's cool and just, you know, want money, you know, yeah. money should not be your, your driving factor in an employee's uh, motivation. That's again, just personal philosophy, but you know, the employee that wants to show up to work, regardless of how much they're getting paid, obviously that's a factor, but the employee who's excited about doing whatever you guys are doing is going to do a significantly better job than the guy you pay or the girl you pay, you know, double that who doesn't really want to come to work. So that's my, that's my biggest piece is find the right people. Yeah. Find the right people. I do have to disagree with you in, in the sense. Um, I think people should be getting paid, you know? Oh, I'm not um, yeah, saying yeah, people yeah. shouldn't be getting paid. <laughs> no, I know that. I know. I'm just saying like, um, 
I made the mistake of like trying to sell my dream of my company when I first mm -hmm. started out and, and trying to get people on board. And some people did, dude, I had people working like 40 hour work weeks. And then the first thing goes wrong in the business because it's bound to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, they're out the door and stuff. I'm like, hmm, maybe I should have been paying them. You know, like, right, they, right, right. Let me put a caveat on that. This is after the point you are paying them to be satisfied at work. So find oh, yeah. people you can pay to be there and they're now, happy with that pay, but are also passionate. Yeah, then yeah, I'm going to ask you the question right here. This is, this is a big one. Whose responsibility is it to get them passionate? Is it the owner of the business or is it the employee themselves? That's a good question. Uh, it's not the employee themselves. Mm. It's not their responsibility, I don't think. You know, it's if they have the if they have the predisposition to that passion, it's yours to bring that out. Right. It's your responsibility. Your employees are your responsibility. How would you Period. tell someone to do that? And uh, that's 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 a skill. And if you have that skill, you're going to be a great leader one day. That's that's the key to to leadership, basically. You know, going getting your team to believe in you. Yeah, I'm going through a program right now. Passion. I'm going through a program right now. And we we're talking last night we were talking about uh leadership and fellowship, right? Um the there's a couple of questions. Would you consider yourself more of a leader or a follower? Leader. Do you agree? It's not a matter of you agree. I, do you agree? Because I I consider this fact. If you don't, that's okay too. I th there to be a good leader, to be a great leader, you need to be an amazing follower. You have to have the ability to follow extremely well right yes okay you have to understand your place as a leader totally yeah and at the same time um man you should be looking ahead to see who's done what you've done and they're like killing it and then go ask them what they did when they when they were at your level you know what i right. mean you should be able to follow that and then the the, the next question is like what just rattle off three four five things what are some character traits or characteristics of someone who embodies a, a great follower? A great follower? Yeah. Um, someone who I've always thought about as a great leader where, you know, they should be in a position where the people underneath them look at their leadership jobs like, oh, thank God I'm not doing that side of things, you know? No, I want to be, think about the follower. Think about think if about someone's someone's what would you want them, what character traits would you want them to have if they're following you? Uh the ability to look at well, this is this is kind of ironic, but the ability to look at other perspectives. Yeah. To understand the 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 external factors than just their perspective of like, okay, now we have a crazy deadline, we have to do this, but you know look at the other perspective is if we don't get this done, we don't, we might not have a job, you know, mm -hmm. the ability to understand the position of the leader. Yeah, this sense? is good. No, it is good. It is good. Yeah. And then I think another thing that someone said last night was um, to realize that the leader is not supposed to be perfect. Like it can't be, the leader's not going to be perfect. So instead of trying to tear apart their every flaw, take the good that is about them and, and follow that, you know? Right. So, what about being like coachable, right? Yes, you know, like exactly. You, okay, Education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, the good follower should be able to know that they're better at, you know, for me, filmmaking than me, right? Okay, they're a better filmmaker. They're whatever. And, you know, Noah's my producer. That's, that's not my that's not what i'm supposed to do i'm supposed to help you be a filmmaker right as a leader i'm supposed to lead you to your passion to help you grow as a filmmaker to help or help them grow as a filmmaker um and having them be like oh he doesn't even you know i'm a way better editor it's like okay yeah but go manage a difficult client like go you know keep this project on track when everything in the entire world is trying to get it off of track right that's the stuff you don't want to do you just want to make 
films. You just want to find your passion and be creative, you know? And, you know, having people who understand that, having people who are like, you know, thank God, oh, thank God I have a producer who deals with all the, the, the super annoying stuff so I can actually just do the fun stuff, right? See, and, I, I think you're trying to say the same thing I'm getting at here too, is that like, a good follower should have the ability to think like a leader, maybe not act. I mean, it's not their job to act like a leader, but their job is to think like a leader. Do you agree? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like you said, I have the perspective. Also, I think it's also a spectrum of leader to follower too. Mm-hmm. So now how about a leader? What was a leader going to have? What, like what, what character traits should a leader have? Empathy. Empathy. Absolutely. Empathy. Um, uh, understanding it, someone else's it, perspective at least, right at least the, right at least the ability of empathy you know if you uh get put in a position where you're going to have to rely on your employees a hundred percent and if you don't have the ability to understand their emotions and their point of view of the situation of the project or anything like that you're going to lose their respect for you they're going to they're going to feel that you don't get it. They're going to feel like they're just your employee and not, you know, a super important part in someone you care about and someone who is critical to yours and their success, right? So if they're just a um a, an asset, if that's all they are, I don't think that you can be a good leader to if you look at your employees that way. At least in my position in my point of view right now yeah yeah um what about uh vision would you want to follow someone who doesn't know where they're going hmm if i know they're going somewhere what if they're just going west so i would follow someone who is you know has a vision but is doing stuff is making things happen and all maybe, right Maybe but then, it's not towards that the the vision that I necessarily believe in, but yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, if you're going to follow someone, at least the the leader should know where they're going. Right, they should know generally where they want to go. I think being a leader and knowing exactly where you want to go is a good habit, but it is um, maybe arrogant in a way to think you can get to like, that's, you're going to go on a single straight path to exactly where you want to go. No, it's going to be a zigzag of, okay, we're going to change it and go over here and do that and do in this endeavor. And, you know, things are constantly evolving. So did that answer your question? No, I get where you're going at. Um, but I think that, I think it's just a matter of handling obstacles, but you, at the end of the day, you know where you're going. Right. Right. Like I've had the reason I bring this up, right. Cause I've had like points in my life or not my life in my business where I've had no vision. We're just right. bouncing around doing idea or project or this client or that client, right. not knowing okay. who we want to serve or how much money we want to be taking in revenue so that we can pay our employees this and uh, how we're going to like, what are the first, maybe I don't know steps eight, nine, 10, 11, but I know step right. one and step two and taking those steps, even if they're in a sideways direction, but I still have my eyes over on that vision so that I can still keep moving closer and closer that way. Because if not, I'm spinning in circles, creating different offers and ideas and products right. and services and stuff like this. And my employers are like, what the hell are we doing? I was doing right. this on Tuesday and now it's Friday and I'm doing a completely different job. I wouldn't want to follow, I wouldn't someone, follow like someone without a vision. Right. I wouldn't follow someone who has no vision. Yes, exactly. Right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the ability to have a vision and I think the ability to sell that vision, which brings us back to how do you, is it the employee's job to be inspired or is it the, uh, the leaders, the, the CEO, the founder. I think it's the ability to sell your vision to your employees, which should act as followers be, and get them inspired to go after that and be a part of reaching that vision. It is your job to find employees that you can inspire. Yes. Yes. I don't think that everyone is inspirable. 
right? No, like you said. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. I think that it, when you do have an employee that is like, you know, committed, they like what they're doing. Um, your job as a leader should be to get them to wake up in the morning and be excited to come in just the way you're excited to come in to work on Saturday and Sunday to see the final product of your video. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, and like when, when I have someone making something for me and it turns out great, like I didn't make it, but I'm so excited about it. Right. I watch it as if it's, you know, my own step kid as a as a metaphor <laughs> like this is awesome i'm so proud of like you and the filmmaking team and everything like it's it's everybody at the end of the day should be happy with the work that's happening in the company mm. no. yeah absolutely man i'm gonna take it in another direction here um that was a good talk though about leadership and yeah. everything a lot of the stuff a lot of the stuff is like uh i think i i need maybe 20 minutes to like really think about and come up with the, uh, the, the poignant and consolidated answers for you. But, you know, these yeah. conversations are what gets stuff going in your head and you'll think about on in the car and make you a better leader. That's right. That's it. Yeah. Oh, and at the bottom line is, is that like a lot of the qualities, what I was getting at here, this is, we'll, we'll tie this in a bow. What, this is what I was getting at is that the qualities of the follower almost resemble the qualities of a great leader too yes you know what i mean so it's like it's not that you are like the first question i ask you do you see yourself more as a leader or as a follower your answer really should be both right you know what i mean in my opinion this is like you know me getting on my high horse for a second but yeah um i think i think there's also the a general group of are you a team player and whether well, you're a leader or a follower in that team might not be indicative of your ability to be a team player, right? There are people who can do both very successfully, but there are also people who aren't team players and they're not going to be a follower or a leader, right? They're going to be true. a contractor or they're going to be uh, someone who works on their own and loves it, the lone wolf, as it were, you know, and that's, mm. that's totally fine. So I think there's, or they're at, a, they're at a nine to five, you know, clocking in, clocking out and, right. you know, spinning their wheels. But let's, let's see. I got a few questions here, man. Do, do you know what the law of attraction is? Yes. I do. do you believe in it? You think it's true? Oh, I believe it is. Uh, yes, I think it's true, but I don't think it's true for the reasons often given. Mm. I think we go through and things that are important to us, our brain makes note of them. You know, I see someone holding a the, camera on the street. I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a camera. I know that's quick, important, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think the law of attraction is us going through life, figuring out what's important to us and then analyzing all of the noise around us and picking things out, picking out opportunities, picking in and you know, opening your eyes to all those things around you that are already there, they're already existing, but because you've, de you know, decided to pay attention to them, it gives you more opportunity for those things to come into your life. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's actually called our reticular activating system. Mm. I mean, is this, our, is, our is just... it's, a, it's actually something in our brain that, that does okay. that, what you were saying. Like, let's say you buy a new uh, Toyota Camry. And then mm -hmm. it's, it's you everywhere you drive now, you see that same model of the Toyota right. Camry. Right. That's what's happening. It's a reticular activating system. So like um, when you're, you are working with cameras all the time. So mm -hmm. when you see a camera, <laughs> it pops out to you a hell of a lot more than it pops out to me. I can't tell you the last time I saw someone with a camera on the street and thought like, right. yeah, or wherever, you know, it's just like not in my head. It goes right Yeah, like when's the last time you saw someone walking on the street holding a camera? Yeah, I can't even think of it, dude. Never. I see it all the time. Yeah, awesome. see that? That's ex exactly it. Um, yeah, it's cool. Are you religious, man? Do you, do you have a faith base at all? I'm not. You're I'm not? not? Nope. And, um, no reason. You know, I'm not atheist. I don't bash anyone. I'm just not a part of anything. Um, I don't find myself drawn to it. I think it's very fascinating. Mm -hmm. Like the, the uh, different religions and the, the ideologies and everything like that. I've just never, I was, my parents' philosophy was 
figure figure it out it's yeah, on yeah, your yeah. own we're not going to impose anything on you you know you're going to get to an age where you're old enough to you know go around and figure out where you want to be in the world what group you want to fit in with and what you want to believe and where your faith is and uh i just haven't found that to be with religion yeah let's put a re- religion aside do you believe that there's like a higher power at all do you know what i'm saying or like like maybe not so so there's there's like i guess two options for you right like atheists is you believe there's nothing you die you go in the ground and you turn to dirt right or or and then there's the um the ag- agnostic who like they're just like i don't know i'm more on the side of agnostic yeah so i when i'm on my deathbed i will probably become religious let's put it yeah that. it's interesting you know? um but until that point there's a the there's a side of my brain that is like no there's that doesn't make sense it's very the the human condition of thinking that we're going somewhere afterwards is a human thing um but the other side of my brain's like i really hope there is i'm just let's 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 table that until we have to deal with that right Mm. now here's a question right um let's say belief is a choice i'm not trying to push in any way i'm just this is like more mm-hmm. of a of a fun thing to go off of and if you want to shift topics we totally can but i think it's interesting um you have a choice to believe in it or not to believe in it right and you just told me that you want it to be true so right. in my head i'm like why wouldn't you just choose to believe in it just because you have the choice right number one okay. and, and it's not like um and it's it's at the cost of complete disregard for whatever you think is logical mm-hmm. i'm not saying that like you have to be logical about it but like you have a choice like period right, right? like you'd be like yep. i do believe this or i don't um and you don't have to answer it but um What's interesting to me is um, a lot of what you said is like, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me how this could happen. Maybe the afterlife thing is a little bit broad, but like everything else that's happening that happens in our world in the universe or like how things live and interact with each other and like our imagination and dream, like, dude, like so much about life, like right. healing, so much about life, just like, Dude, I, I can't see how there couldn't be like i think there's more to I, consciousness i think there's something weird there i don't think we're anywhere near right yeah. our current our current definitions our current understandings of what consciousness is but i think there's something weird there yeah yeah i am by no means qualified to even comment on what <laughs> totally I totally yeah, yeah, yeah um and you know, I, to answer why I haven't chosen to believe that stuff is I haven't really had a reason. I've had a very fortunate life. You know, I've never, I've never believed and I've never had any, you know, Maybe that's a reason to believe or to be thankful at least. Maybe it's definitely a reason to be thankful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, if my life goes off the deep end and I'm really, really struggling, you sometimes I feel like that is a great place to start in getting your life back together is just believing that you can believing that it will and believing that you know there is a reason for things and that you have the ability to do that and i think that's one of the reasons that you know uh, oftentimes religion is very i don't i can't back these immediately but from my understanding religion is very important in like aa meetings and drug recovery and all that stuff um you gotta see some you gotta see some of these christian entrepreneurs killing it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and i was talking with the the um owner of a very successful production company in worcester and he said you know the point in which my business changed the point that it started becoming successful is i was like yeah or is that he said i'm just going to leave it up to god whether this succeeds or not and this rattled me to my core. Like I was a young entrepreneur. I was like, all right, this is numbers analytics. I need to read books and go out and do things. And I just had a uh, very successful entrepreneurs be like, yeah, I just let God figure out if it would succeed or not. 
And like, yeah. if it did, <laughs> uh, it was his choice. And if it didn't, it was also his choice. And that just baffled me because he just <laughs> removed him from the situation. He just removed it. It's like, I'm going to give it my best. And, you know, if it sticks, it's yeah. not me. If it doesn't stick, it's also not me. Yeah. It's something freeing about like, they call it like surrendering that you yeah. are, like, so you just say, Hey, yeah, I am powerless. You know what I mean? I'm not right. trying to push it one way or another, but like, it's, it's interesting. Like yeah. that, there's a lot of people that will say that too. A lot. Yes. Um, yep. And they're not all like, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of people who, you know, it is recovery based and things like that. And they're drug addicts in jail or, and they found God in jail or what, you know what I mean? Like right. those things do happen. Um, but it's, it is interesting. It is interesting. I think it also might uh, correlate to in the moments of panic when you're an entrepreneur that we all have of like, Oh, this, this went bad. I, we need to do something here. Right. Yeah. Um, it's incredibly lonely in those moments. And I think one of the things and one of the reasons you see maybe religion in the entrepreneurial world, again, this is just, this is just off the top of the head opinion. So sure, take all this, oh, I have not thought any of this through. Um, is maybe because in those moments you're like, okay, no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm backed up. You know, my religion is supporting, my faith is supporting me. So I'm going to stop panicking. I'm going to figure it out because at the end of the day, it's okay. Where maybe if you don't have that, that panic cuts deep and it freezes you, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, that's, that's super interesting. I bet, I bet it's far less lonely as an entrepreneur with faith. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. That's good. Good conversation. <laughs> Listen, we only got so much time. I want to get people to know who you are. I want them to follow you. You got your phone number and email down there. So people are going to see right. that shit. So uh, yeah, I guess you're allowed to call, call them, text them and, and send them an email. But where, where do they follow you on social media, man? Uh, signlensmedia.com. Um, I mean, Sign Lens Media on Instagram, yep. um, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Uh, we're even on Google now. Uh, our website's getting a revamp because our website's super outdated. We have a whole bunch of new content coming. Uh, we just wrapped a absolutely massive project uh, shooting at a studio in Boston where we had a big crew and, you know, big clients and stuff like that. Um, and we're going to start putting out a lot more content on those things because uh, we haven't been putting out a lot of content like on social media we've just gotta get your social like, game up, i know brother. i know if only if only if you, you knew someone who if could only you knew that, someone right? yeah <laughs> i'm sure we could work out a trade or something and get you going but uh <laughs> but, right uh and to like now sign lens we're a production company we do branding um if you have a story that you need to tell if you have a website that doesn't have a video on it you need a video on your website absolutely you need a video on your website and we help with that and we can do large-scale productions up to $100,000 budgets, or we can do a little stuff. That's like $1,000 budgets. That's just one guy showing up with a camera. What so, if someone's got a million bucks they want to give you? Well, I would, uh, I would partner with bigger production companies. So I would, I would find some of my old producers and uh, I would- But your man is saying them. he's got integrity, guys. He's going to do right by you no matter what. Yes. Yeah, this guy's the yes. real deal. And, and he should be charging a million dollars because you got to see some of the stuff. He's That's why you got to put this stuff out on social media yes, so people yes. know what they can get with you, brother. Because my God, this stuff is good. He brought a camera to my office and shot a video for three minutes and dude, made me look like a superstar. Uh, <laughs> it's unbelievable what this guy I can do. appreciate that. Um, now, what can... Uh, you already told the listeners how you can solve the problem, right? This guy is the guy you want to go to if you got, you know, some video needs, which every business owner has video needs now. Everyone, like, yep. dude, yep. I, I don't even want to work with people with social media if they're not doing video right now because it's like right. they're wasting their time, they're spinning their wheels, and they're going to be wa wondering why they're not making any right. return on their investment working with right. me because we're still posting graphic design and product photography. Right. That's it, yep. brother. Um, so contact this guy and then contact me so we can get it distributed for you. Um, <laughs> and then what, what could the, uh, the listeners do for you? 
You know, like what, what can they support you in any way? Can they go follow you? Can they go, you know, share some of your stuff? Can they right. introduce you to the people? What if the yeah, people yeah, listening, yeah. they, they um, know someone who's like, you know, famous or this or that. What can someone do for you, brother? So this is a whole separate conversation. One of my big visions is to build a creative hub in Worcester. I want to, you know, open my own soundstage studio where people, you know, my team and people associated with my team can basically learn to be creative and learn the technologies and, you know, find that passion and be inspired in the space, right? And one of the things I'm uh, trying to build is the network of creatives in Worcester. So this is any filmmaker, artists, photographers, you know, anything Models, like that. If you consider, right. If you consider yourself someone who's creative, reach out to me. Let's, let's chat because more often than not, you know, I'm going to come across a client or, you know, a referral or something like that, that will need the creativity that you have, that will need the, the, the art or the specific type of photography that you do. So I'm really trying to meet other creatives in Worcester so that I can give them jobs basically and, you know, refer them to clients and build out the, build out the network. So guys, he wants you to help him help other people, man. Can you find a better guy than <laughs> Noah Arnold? My goodness. All right. I'm going to close up uh, with like think one or two more questions here. I got my paper here, guys. That's why I'm looking down. Um, what, what's the best way? What's the number one way? Before I, and this is the last question, what's the number one way to, for someone to get in touch with you? You want them to call you, send you an email? Get, send email, you Instagram. No, no, one, oh, one, man. What's the best oh, way? I got to pick you, one. What, what are you going to answer right away? Uh, probably, well, answer right away is Instagram. Instagram direct message. Right. Isn't that crazy, guys? Yeah. Who would have thought? Um, if like, if you have like a, a lot of info that you need to give me, send me an email. Right. If you if you if you're sending me something where I need to like wrap my head around it and like under deeply understand what you're asking, should hop on a call with the man, call, right. get on a Zoom or something like this. Right. All right. I'm gonna end with this question. You're allowed to think a little bit on it though. Okay. You can All take right. Oh. Your... All right. If you could go back in time and tell yourself three sentences, mm. what would they be, okay. and how old would you be when you told yourself those three sentences? You want to add why that's okay too. Three sentences. Only three sentences. Okay. Be along the lines of. How old would you be, and why? I probably be probably be beginning of college. Beginning of college, so you're 18 years old, 19 yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably around there. And it's uh, three sentences. Damn. You all, you're going back in time. That's all you get. And you got to leave and you'll never, ever be able to get this chance again. Hmm. Um, I want to go. All right. I have three ideas. and I don't know how to put them in the sentences. One of them is nothing happens unless you make it happen. So that's a sentence. I can't even explain it. All right, I'll explain it afterwards. Um, yeah, nothing yeah, happens yeah. unless you make it happen. Yeah. Um, there's. Mm, I'm thinking deep about this. I want to say something about like, you know, the 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 people in your life of. Never assume malice that people are doing bad people things. are usually people are usually good let me put it that way okay that's the last right. sentence you can dig um, into it afterwards so what, what we've got so far nothing happens unless you make it happen people are right. usually good right don't assume that they're out to get you right, right. okay because they don't oftentimes they don't care enough about anyone but themselves to go out they're out for for themselves and if it right. happens to hurt you that's probably what's happening <laughs> right um and then the last sentence 18 huh 
Um, learn to be a good person will be the best business decision you make learning to be a good person will be the best business decision that you make yes cool so can i explain any of those or yeah, you're gonna, you just have that out of the blue and now that's all it gets that's all it gets and then he's gotta you you know you, you basically <laughs> gotta pop up and be like yo i'm you from the future i got three sentences to tell you that's it you know but you can explain to us because we're right here in the future okay um the good person business thing i agree with 100 percent. that's that's probably the one sentence i'd pick um where if you if you're a, and a good person is maybe the wrong word but if you have empathy for the people around you, you can understand them better. You understand their gripes. You understand what they're going through and you can work with them better. You understand clients better. You understand your employees better. You understand your bosses better, you know? Um, and what happened to you to when just, you were 18? What? You, what happened to you when you were 18? When you were going to say- just, people, you don't think of when you're 18, you don't think of it. You think no, no, like, no, no, okay, no, I no, no. The, I want to, sentence number two. Assuming right. that people are doing the wrong thing. Oh, oh, oh. Um, well, on film sets, you know, it's it's easy. It, back in college, it's easy to be like, oh, this person's not doing this because they're a bad worker and they don't want this project to succeed. And you, know, you hear a lot of that. And it's never, it's damn near never true. Mm-hmm. No one's ever actually has malice. And the people who do, are not usually people you want to be around to start with anyway and i don't even think people with malice are often in you know the 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 grown-up professional world because they get weeded out pretty quick you know if you have someone who is being terrible because they just want to be terrible or whatever you know that's gonna that that word travels so fast and i don't think they'll survive very long um yeah this oh man i would change the first three, one? i would change these three sentences oh what man. was the first one well um nothing happens unless you make it happen oh yeah that's that's easy it yeah, just yeah, does yeah, yeah, yeah okay if you if you're gonna sit in your room and just hope your company's just, just not go out and do something go like going out and like making an idiot of yourself is so much better it's so much better than just not doing anything because at least at the end of the day, you'd be like, Oh, I tried. I'm an idiot, but I tried. Right. And tomorrow I'll try again. And you know, a little bit more like the whole, I'm too scared to go do it. Cause I look stupid. Like that's okay. So, so what do you look stupid five years from now? If you look stupid a hundred times, you're going to look wise. Right. Eventually. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm going to have to tie it up here. Sure. Yeah, we'll, I don't think 18 we'll, year old me would, uh, would uh would understand. know what to do with those sentences that's all right that's all right we'll have you back on that's what we'll do we'll get you back on later in another episode um i'm pumped this is actually the first interview um for this i don't know if it's going to drop in that order but it, you're the first one who's recorded uh we've got five or six in the book so far we're going to keep booking up a bunch of people we'll get you back on because i think it'd be great to see your progression and everything next yeah. thing you know you're being doing million dollar projects and stuff and uh, blowing up. So I'm super excited to have that. And guys, if you're listening, I don't, I'm doing this for free. I don't, I don't want to make any money off you guys, nothing, not a penny. Um, I ask that in return, your payment for listening and getting this awesome value and access to these awesome guests is to go and share this out, go and share it, uh, with someone who's going to need to hear this. If this wasn't for you, there's someone who, you know, that this is for, so Get, get this in their hands, post it on social media, tag me. I'm going to repost you. Uh, same thing. Tag Cyan Lens Media. It's just Cyan Lens on social media. Yeah. Get them, get them on there. Send them a DM and tell them like how awesome his story was. Cause I know you connected with it. Um, Noah, thank you so much for being, being on. And uh, until next time, peace.